Opening statement. Well, I uh, I think we just got through a tough stretch. Just it's, it's felt like, you know, I know it hasn't necessarily been this way, but I think to our staff and our players, it's just kind of felt like a game every couple days, which is great and fun. Um, but I think it's what nine games in three weeks, and so you could kind of feel that over the last week and a half, you could just kind of feel it wearing down. And as a coach, you know, even though I sensed it, I probably started pushing more because I just think we could, we have a lot of things we can really improve on. There's a lot of things that we got to do better. And so I pushed really hard in practice this week. Um, and I'm just pleased that we found a way to win and found a way to string some defensive stops together and get out and run and transition at times. So that was some of the good stuff. There's a lot of things we got to get better at. Uh, offensive execution, uh, being more consistent in playing the way that we practice every day. Uh, certainly, I've been complaining about us on the defensive glass for quite some time. I look down tonight and they out rebound us on the offensive board. And, and you play a team that shoots that many shots from behind the arc. And <coughs> some of them were really difficult shots, I thought. You know, I thought we guarded well at times. You're going to get some sort of strange bounces and some long rebounds. So you know you're going to give up a couple when you play against a team that plays Bryant's style of play. But we got to get better at securing the ball and getting loose balls. I thought when we did that tonight, when we actually did secure the ball and get live ball stops, we had opportunities to run and, and play in transition, and we had some success. I thought when we didn't do that, you know, the game was frustrating at times. But I'm pleased that we got through this stretch. Our guys are really trying. They're practicing hard. Um, I think we can get a lot better, which is a really neat feeling as a coach. And it's going to be nice to have a couple days to kind of catch our breath and, and get back to being healthy again. Obviously, a lot about the game, but do you have an update on, on JD? Yeah, um, I, I, I believe if we left it up to JD tonight, he would have played. Um, he was in a boot the last two days in practice on which is Sunday, right? Yep, yeah, that's the day. Yep, okay. On practice on Friday, uh, at the very beginning of practice, somebody going after a loose ball that we didn't secure, shocker. Okay, somebody fell as he was diving, you know, dove and, and fell on his foot, and he had a really mild ankle sprain. We put him in a boot. He was in a boot for two days, and he woke up today and texted me and said, Coach, I feel so much better. I think I can play today. And so I think if we left it up to JD, he's such a warrior, he would have played. But our training staff, uh, Bob Mangine, you know, you know, felt like it was probably the smart thing to do after being in a boot for two days to let him recover and to make sure we didn't take any chances with him. So I think he'll be fine, guys. I think he'll practice tomorrow if we didn't have the day off. Um, and then it's good to get A.J. McGinnis coming back if you're going to ask about injuries. Um, he practiced in a limited role here the last couple days, so it's nice to see him progressing back. And I think we could have used both of those guys trying to score against his own tonight with the way that they shoot it. Those stretches where you were able to get out in transition, uh, get some buckets, it kind of started in the first half where you had that little spurt. What is the difference to, to that flip switch? And obviously getting stops is part of it, but how have they been able to have success in those runs where they can get out and get those layups? Yeah, it starts with live ball stops, Justin. I, it, that's the first thing. Like, you know, even if you get a stop, but it's the stop because you couldn't secure a loose ball or a rebound and it gets deflected out of bounds, everybody gets a chance to set their defense. When you get a live ball stop, you really do have a chance to run. And Bryant is sending everybody to the offensive board. It's a unique style of play and a can be a difficult style of play to play against. They're sending everybody to the board. So it's not easy to secure when five guys are crashing. But when you rebound it, you have an advantage in transition. So the first part is just securing the ball. And then the second part, which is something we've been working on all year, is sprinting the floor and sprinting the floor with organization. And then the guy with the ball, whether it's the guy that secures the rebound or the guy that we outlet the ball to, playing with pace and with discipline, and playing under control. When we've done that, good things are happening to us. You've kind of had some slow starts over this stretch, first two segments of a game. Is there anything to fix that, or is it just a matter of not not hitting shots right out of the gate? Or, well, I, I think I'm very aware of it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I think if there's a reason that we could identify for it, we'd try to address it. I think it's been different things in different games. We didn't have a slow start at Miami Wednesday night. You know, I thought we had a, maybe our best start of the season. 
And I was mad because somebody told me, Justin tweeted that we didn't play hard for the first 32 minutes. I said, we played pretty good the first six minutes of the game. I still didn't think they were better the first I didn't read it. I don't read Twitter. <laughs> but we were, we were the better team in the first four or five minutes of that game. So anyway, I'm just being picky. But um, I can have some fun after we win, right? But, uh, but we, no, we had a great start at Miami. Um, I, I think it's been different things. Tonight, it, the free throw line had a lot to do with the slow start. You know, missed tip-ins. We missed like two. I think John missed a two-incher, two of them. Yeah. So we missed a couple two-inchers. We missed a bunch of free throws. I think, you know, have those things go in, we might be feeling like we had a good start. So it's been different things every night. Um, I think the idea for me is we just got to be the same team in terms of approach and execution every time we take the floor, and that's what we come in practice for. You had to make some early adjustments so seeing Micah Adams Woods pick up two fouls in the first minute and a half. Talk about the role Mike Saunders played in that adjustment for you guys early on. Yeah, I mean, I, I hated that, uh, that that Mike had gotten foul trouble early, you know, and I, he's, he's getting in a better rhythm. You know, he's been a little out of rhythm offensively in terms of scoring the ball. He's been terrific as a setup man. I mean, I think his assist to turnover ratio is one of the best in the country, and we're really pleased with his numbers there at the point guard position. But you feel you feel like he's getting in a better rhythm in practice. You can see it coming. He's really been working at his game, and you hate that he gets in some foul trouble early tonight. But um, Mike Saunders has just been terrific. He just keeps getting better. And I thought he did a nice job of kind of carrying the load. And then I thought Micah did a really nice job of coming in with two fouls and still playing aggressively, okay, and then not picking up a third. So I like to play guys with two as long as they don't play like they have two fouls. You know, I want them to have discipline, but we can't be out there just letting guys drive by us because we're not trying to foul. And I thought Micah did a good job tonight, and that gives me confidence that the next time he has two, I'll be able to throw him back in the game in the first half. One more question. Vic and Odie had a uh, good stretch there in the second half. Just talk about their progression. Man, I'm so proud of Vic. Um, I said this on the radio here a minute ago. Um, I, I probably coach him as hard as I coach anybody on our team every day. I mean, I'm all over him. And I, I think he's his harshest critic except for me. I'm probably the harshest critic, and he's his second harshest critic. And I think that's because I, I really believe he can be special. I think he has really, really special gifts, and I think he's got the right stuff inside of him to become a great player. Um, he's been down about his play, but he's been practicing his tail off. If you asked him, he'd still be down about the way he played tonight, and I think he can play way better than he played. I think he's just scratching the surface, but it was good to see the way he's practiced and worked over the last week. It was good to see some of that stuff pay off in the game, so it's really neat to see. Look down, he has a double-double. I mean, I thought at times he was pretty darn good tonight, and he's getting better at the little things that drive coaches crazy. Okay, he, he's a freshman in a lot of ways. Not that he hasn't played experienced basketball because he played at a high level in Europe. He's a freshman that he does a lot of the stuff that drive coaches crazy, sprinting back, not sprinting back and communicating in transition or taking a little break or messing with the ball when he shouldn't, that type of thing. And he's getting better at those little things that I've been harping on him about. And so it's good to see him have the success. Boy, Odie's just like the Energizer Bunny. You know, I, I thought he was really good tonight and gave us some energy that we needed on the board, running the floor, and then doing his job ducking in around the basket on offense. All right, thanks, Coach.